ਦਾ ਚੰਗੀ ਗਿਆ ਨੇ ਚੰਗੀ ਗਿਆ ਨੇ ਨਾ ਚੰਗੀ ਗਿਆ ਨੇ ਜਵਾਨ ਤੇ ਕੁਦੂਰ ਉਹ ਬਾਤ ਮਾਰਦਾ ਜਿਸ ਕੋ ਤੋਂ ਦੀ ਤੀ ਜਿਸ ਕੋ ਤੋਂ ਦੀ ਤੀ ਤੋਂ ਦੀ ਤੀ ਤੋਂ ਦੀ ਤੀ ਜੋ ਬੱਚਾ ਬਾਹਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਚਲਾ ਤੋ My name is Gilbert. I'm the organizer of this protest event. I've organized six to seven protests in Hongdae Park. And this is the biggest crowd I have. Give yourself a hand again. Thank you, thank you. But I want to address the elephant in the room. Sorry, yesterday I couldn't speak because there's an article that I wrote about two years ago. I think it's because it's called characteristics and behavior of 1.8 million foreigners living here. I know that a lot of foreigners are not happy with the article. I sincerely apologize to you, really. was written as a profiling of foreigners living here but on retrospection I felt that is distasteful is something that hurts the feelings of our foreign friends here please forgive me sincerely I apologize again right now our hand the program to Mr. Kwan, our MC for the day. Let's give him a hand, Mr. Kwan. Fellow Singaporeans, thank you very much for coming. We are indeed heartened in transitioning.org to see the level of support that this and the concern about this issue. I'm your MC and I shall be calling upon our speakers to address us one by one. Today's issue is about the white paper. It's about the white paper. <laughs> Problem for crowding, huh? <laughs> Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Now, before our speakers address in detail individually all the various aspects of the white paper, I would like to delve a little bit and uh, speak about the historical perspective. Uh, by the way, I see my friend Winston. Winston, can you please come forward? All speakers, uh, please take a seat to the front. Uh, we welcome Mr. Winston Vijaya Singha. Good to see you, Winston. Let's look a little bit. I would like to give a little bit of a historical perspective of this idea of immigrant and population growth. Population growth is linked to immigration. All right. What is immigration? Immigration, in my definition, is an artificial transplant of people into a country. Artificial. Because they are not born here, their fathers were not born here, neither are their grandfathers. Yes, they are artificially transplanted. Yes, now let this not be interpreted as xenophobic. Huh? Because these are the problems we face, not only in Singapore. The problem of immigration is faced even in very advanced, developed countries such as Germany, Denmark, Norway, and England. Our fathers, 
our grandfathers, our forefathers came to Singapore more than 180 years ago. And when they came here, what did, what did they come here with? They came here with nothing. Yes, nothing. With only a hope in their hearts. Only hope that they can find a job and make some money. And the shirts on their back. That's all they came with. And when they came here, they were faced with a very unsympathetic and exploitative colonial government. The government don't care what, what the hell happened to these immigrants. They were made use of. And those immigrants who came, they came at the risk of life and limb. Many perished in cutting out the virgin jungles that were existent in Singapore and Malaya. Well, Singapore was part of Malaya then under the British. We can't deny that. So, anyway, 180 years, the immigrants made good. Our forefathers who came from India and from China, we made it good. <clears throat> what did they leave behind? They left behind a crushing circle of poverty from which they cannot escape. For generations after generations in India and China, these people could not escape that poverty and they have to leave the shores of their home to try to make it good in a distant place called Singapore. Probably they couldn't even pronounce the name and they don't even know where the hell is Singapore in those days. And to this land they came to try to make it good, to escape that poverty which is crushing them, to escape the feudalistic society that for which they were enslaved for generations after generations. So this was what they were trying to escape. Well, Singapore somehow grew under the British colonial government whose main objective was called to look after Mother Britannia. The main objective is not to look after you guys. So long as they put enough to you that you become productive to them. That's all they were interested in. Whatever it is, they did for Mother England, not for you, not for you immigrants. Anyway, Indian, Chinese, and a lot of other from the Indonesian Malay archipelago who settled in Singapore and Malaya made it good. And eventually, we gained our independence, yes. With the PAP government leading Singapore in the 60s and 70s, we made good. We made good under the leadership. Alright? We built upon that and achieved what we achieved today. But, I for one do not want to see a new Humanistic society take root in Singapore. Do we control the factors of the economy? Any schoolboy textbook will tell you that what are the factors driving the economy? Capital, labor, land, that is property. And increasingly, Singaporeans are not controlled in all of these three factors which leave us merely feudal serfs in a modern society. The increasing income gap has given us. We don't control the money, capital. Do we control the land? Who owns the old land? We are paying 30 years mortgages to HDB. We are just like the feudal serfs who are tied down to the land. They owe it to the lord and gentry, to the aristocrats. And they serve and till the land forever, generations after generations. So what different are we? And I can just conclude now, just, we have a lot of speakers. Yes, Singapore came from an immigrant society. But we do not want us to turn into a society of immigrants.
Now, without much further ado, I call on our first speaker, Mr. Rami Philamont. Mr. Mr. Philamont is an active blogger and a social worker. Firstly, I want to thank uh, Gilbert.